Hello, my name is Carrie Brown and I am with the Central Mississippi Regional Library System. Today I'm going to be reading to you chapters 4, 5, and 6 of Calendar Mysteries number 2, February Friend, written by Ron Roy and illustrated by John Stephen Gurney, published by Random House Children's Book. Chapter 4. Bad News As soon as Bradley woke up Saturday morning, he peered into the cage. Douglas was sitting in a corner. He wasn't moving. Douglas? Bradley whispered. Are you all right? Bradley reached into the cage and put his hand on Douglas's back. The rabbit felt warm, and Bradley could tell that he was breathing. But that was all he was doing. Bradley started to get dressed. What's going on? Brian asked from his bed. Doc Henry told Mom to bring Douglas in if he didn't get better, Bradley reminded him. And he didn't. Brian sat up and blinked. I'm coming too, he said. The boys got dressed, woke their mother, and made themselves cereal for breakfast. Between spoonfuls, Brian called Nate. We're taking Douglas to the vet, he said. You want to come? Get Lucy too. When Nate and Lucy arrived, Mrs. Pinto drove them all to the vet's office on East Green Street. The four kids crowded into the office with the cage. Dr. Henry was waiting. So, here's the mystery, Bunny, he said. Let's take a look. Dr. Henry gently lifted Douglas out of the cage. He placed the rabbit on his examination table. Bradley noticed that Douglas was trembling. Why is he shaking, he asked. He's scared, Dr. Henry said. The vet ran his hands all over Douglas's body. He looked inside his ears, eyes, and mouth. He weighed Douglas on a small scale and took his temperature. He parted Douglas's fur and studied his skin. Well, I'd say this is a very healthy rabbit, Dr. Henry stated. His eyes are clear and his teeth are perfect. Bradley showed Dr. Henry the pellets he had in his pocket. These are a fine brand of rabbit food, the vet said. Someone took very good care of this fellow. So what could be wrong with him? Bradley asked. He won't move or anything. I've seen this before, the vet said. Dogs, cats, even monkeys sometimes stop eating when they feel lonely. I think your rabbit misses his owner. He feels abandoned, confused. He may be in shock, and that's why he won't eat or drink. The kids looked at Douglas on the table. Dr. Henry put the rabbit back into his cage. I'm afraid Douglas will become very sick if he doesn't start eating and taking water, he said. He could die. But what can we do? Bradley asked. Dr. Henry stroked the rabbit's soft ears. If this were my rabbit, I'd return him to his real owner, he said. And soon. Chapter 5. Running Out of Time On their way home, the twins' mom drove up Main Street. Brian sat up front and the other kids were in the back. Douglas's cage lay across their laps. Suddenly, Bradley sat up. He tapped his mother's shoulder. Mom, stop! He shouted. Here? Why? His mother asked. I want to take Douglas into the pet shop, Bradley said. Mrs. Wong might know his owner. Great idea, his mother said. She pulled the car up in front of the Furry Feet pet shop. All four kids climbed out. Bradley and Lucy carried the cage through the front door. Hi, kids, Mrs. Wong said. What have you got? Mrs. Wong was dropping fish food into an aquarium. All along the walls were fish tanks and animal cages. It's a rabbit, and he won't eat, Nate said. Mrs. Wong peered into the cage at Douglas. The kids explained how Douglas had been left in their classroom closet. Then they told her what Dr. Henry had told them. So you want to know if I know the owner, right? Mrs. Wong asked. The four kids nodded. Mrs. Wong put her hand in the cage. She stroked the rabbit's fur. Douglas sat in a corner with his eyes closed. I'm sorry, but I've never seen this bunny, she said, and I don't know anyone in town who owns one like this. Bradley felt awful. How would they ever find Douglas's owner? The kids thanked Mrs. Wong and carried Douglas back to the car. Any luck? Bradley's mom asked. She pulled into traffic. No, she'd never seen Douglas before, Bradley said. I'm sorry, hun, his mother said. I have an idea, Nate said. We could put an ad in the newspaper. 
We could ask whoever left Douglas at the school to get in touch with us. But that could take days, Bradley said. We need to find Douglas's owner soon, Lucy said. When they got home, the kids carried Douglas back up to Bradley and Brian's room. Come down in a few minutes, the twins' mom called up the stairs. I'll make hot chocolate. Thanks, Mom, Brian yelled back. They sat the cage on Bradley's desk. He doesn't look any different, Nate said. Maybe we should leave him alone for a while, Lucy said. Maybe he just doesn't like kids, Brian suggested. They all stared at the rabbit. His eyes were closed and he didn't move. Come on, Bradley said sadly. Let's go downstairs. He picked up the three photos as they left the room. Bradley's mom was stirring a pot of hot chocolate on the stove. The kids sat and Bradley spread out the pictures of Douglas. Where'd you get those? The twins' mother asked. They were in the cage, Brian said. His owner must have left them. Lucy pointed to the picture that showed Douglas in someone's hand. He was so cute when he was little, she said. Suddenly, Bradley had an idea. Guys, these pictures could be clues, he said. Chapter 6. Scarfinger. Clues to what? Nate asked. We want to find Douglas's owner, right? Bradley said. He pointed at the hand holding the tiny rabbit. If this is his owner's hand, maybe we can find out who it is. They all stared at the picture. Bradley's mother reached over and pointed with her mixing spoon. Well, we can tell that it's a man's right hand, she said. Boy, he has hairy knuckles, Nate said. And he's got a scar on his little finger, Lucy put in. The kids bent closer to the picture. The scar is shaped like the letter C, Bradley said. Cool, Nate said. Now we just have to find a hairy guy with that scar on his right pinky. Lots of luck, Brian said. Lucy studied the picture showing Douglas on a patch of grass. He must live somewhere with a lawn, she said, and tall hedges. That's about half the yards in green lawn, Nate said. Even we have hedges. Bradley took a closer look at the picture. He grows vegetables, he said. See, those are tomatoes. Bradley's mother sat four mugs and a bag of marshmallows on the table. Careful, it's hot, she said. They thanked Mrs. Pinto and took noisy sips. Well, we'll never find the vegetable garden, Brian said. He pointed out the kitchen window. There's a foot of snow in everyone's yard. What about the other clues? Lucy asked. She picked up the picture that showed Douglas sitting on the wooden bench. Are there any benches like this in Green Lawn? Bradley studied the picture. Guys, I don't think this is a bench, he said. Then what is it? Brian asked, taking the picture. I think it's a seat in a rowboat, Bradley said. See the water behind it? And that's not a railing. It's the outside of the boat. Bradley opened a drawer under the counter. He pulled out a magnifying glass and held it over the picture. It says S-K-I on the side of the boat, he said. Brian grinned. Ron's bait shop has boats for rent, he said. Ron's last name is Pinkowski, and people call him Ski. Awesome, Nate said. Let's go ask him if he knows anyone with a rabbit. It's February, Brian said. Mr. Pinkowski rents out boats in the summertime. Bradley shook his head. He sells baits for ice fishing, too. He grabbed the three pictures. What are we waiting for? He asked. Thank you. Tune in next week for chapters 7, 8, and 9. Goodbye!